What's good, y'all? It's your big homie, the armchair operator, and today we're going to do a 900 round follow up video on the Smith & Wesson M&P 10 millimeter performance center. Now, I did a full breakdown slash first shots, initial impression video of this gun when I picked it up maybe about a month ago, maybe a little over a month ago. So if you want the full breakdown, please check that video out. I will put the link in the video down in the comment section of this video so you can check it out. So the purpose of today's video is just to do a follow up you know, giving my initial impressions, some of the things that I've seen and my overall impressions as a, of the gun as of right now. Usually most people do a thousand round follow up and I was thinking about putting in another hundred rounds on the gun, but there's a reason why I just kind of left it at that and I will get to that. But this video is going to be really short and sweet. So I'm not going to keep you very long. Like I said, it's just a follow up. But anyway, first, thank you to my new subscribers. Thank you to everybody that's watching the videos, commenting, liking, and sharing the videos. It really helps this channel grow. I really appreciate it. So with that out of the way, let's just get into the MP 10 Mic Mic Performance Center. All right, y'all. So let's talk about the Smith & Wesson MP 10 Millimeter Performance Center. First things first, let's do a clear check okay as you can see it is on an empty chamber magazine is empty this gun is clear and we are in a safe and controlled environment now really quick let's just run through the features really fast so we have the raised three dot night sights okay we have the 5.6 inch barrel which is comped in the barrel as well as the slide there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, we have the new style Smith & Wesson trick. This is actually the performance center trigger. It's actually a little bit better than the standard M&P 10 millimeter. Of course, you got your custom, your standard M&P 2.0 grip texturing here. This is the large back strap. The performance center model is only available with the frame amount of frame amount of safety, which you see right there. It's not really a big deal for me. I tend to ride the safety like a 1911 whenever I'm shooting the gun. So you can definitely do that. Magazine release here. It comes with two standard 15 round magazines. All right. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the positives. First positives is the sights. I really like the sights. The fact that they have the raised sights and their night sights, it really helps my eye to get my sight picture really quickly whenever I'm drawing and presenting the gun. The other thing is also because they're raised, you have a co-witness. You'll be able to co-witness with your red dot should you decide to run a red dot on your M&P pistol. And I've noticed that their uh, Smith & Wesson has these sights on some of their other M&P models too. I saw an M&P compact, the new one with the, I think it's a 3.6 six inch barrel that has raised sights too. So definitely kudos to Smith & Wesson. Uh, I would like to see these sights on all of their um, handguns moving forward, but that's just me. Uh, moving right along from there. I like the look of this gun. I really like the look of this gun. To me, it kind of reminds me like a like a duckbill platypus. <laughs> the way, you know, the way the slide is is the way it is in the front here like that. But it gives it a bit of um, imposing and mean looking presence if you ask me. I really like it. Plus, you got the lightning cuts in the slide and also up here in the top, those two cuts the barrel is also cut there so it's ported so it's functional and one thing i will say is that you'll definitely notice the difference when you shoot the when you shoot a 10 millimeter we shoot this particular one versus say some other 10 millimeters it's really 
I would say is tame on the recoil versus some other particular 10 millimeters. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, let's see what else. Just basic ergonomics, Smith & Wesson ergonomics that I just come to really like about these particular guns, you know, and, you know, with the backstrap system that they have and the palm swell, it really allows me to bear down on the gun and keep it under control, even with that 10 millimeter. When I tell you that this thing is accurate, it is accurate. Like I could, I'm known for keyholing targets at five, seven, 10, even 15 yards and more with this thing. And the performance center trigger really helps me to do that. And this particular one, it feels a lot like the M&P competitor trigger on the initial pull, but the reset to me is a bit more tactile and a bit more forceful, which I really like because it helps me to remember where that reset is so that way it makes those follow-up shots that much easier. And as anybody that's been shooting handguns a while will tell you, the less that you deviate this muzzle with your trigger pull, the more accurate your shots will be. So that's why I really like that. Um, it's fully ambi, as you can see, you know, um, slide catch, slide release over here and over here. Also, the frame safety here and here now i will say with the frame safety like i said you can ride it like a 1911 and it's another point of contact so you can really bear down on that recoil and then help it keep it under control so i could do without the frame amount of safety personally but it doesn't bother me you know it, it's functional it's useful unlike some other guns that have frame amount of safeties which are just kind of in the way um, the other things that I like about it, the fact that it has an optics cut and it has the optics plates right out of the box. I really like that. I thank Smith & Wesson for that. There are manufacturers that give you an optics cut, but they don't give you the plates. So to me, that's not fully optics ready if you have to go and get the plates in order to put your red dot on. So, um, the magazines themselves, I mean, they look cool. They feel rugged. They feel durable. I haven't had any issues about... You know with the magazines or anything like that since you know during my 900 rounds of testing and of course we have our picky picky chaney rail here also one last thing to note i do like the rear slide serrations here they're very they're pretty grippy you know really makes it easier to rack the slide with no problem so that's good okay with all that being said let's talk about the cons the main, my main gripe with this particular gun is its reliability. So, out of the 900 rounds, my first 700 rounds, and I've shot various um, loads. I've shot Cellular and Bellet. I've shot Blazer Brass through this. I've put a uh, 2 a Warehouse Reman ammo through this. I've put some Federal 180 grain through this. And the, I have had numerous failure to feed issues. All together, I've had about nine out of the 900 rounds. It's kind of odd that it came out to be nine. It's like one failure to feed out of every 100 rounds. So to some people, that may not sound like much. To me, that is a problem for me. But I'll get to, I'll, let me get into more detail as to what I've experienced so far. So after doing some research online, I've noticed that there were other people who have experienced similar issues with failures to feed with this particular gun. Some had issues with the magazine springs not feeding the rounds up properly, you know, so that way when the slide goes forward to bring it back in the battery to strip the round off the off the magazine, the round would be sitting up too far in an angle. So I got to say that I didn't experience that particular issue. I didn't have any issue, that kind of issue with the magazine. My issues have been failures to failure to feed, specifically failure to go fully back in the battery. And every single time that it happened, just tapping the rear of the slide will send it in the battery. It'll fully chamber and it'll be ready to fire. So 
in my research, uh, some people basically said the gun was undersprung, and I can definitely attest to that. One of the things that I have noticed when I was shooting the gun was that the, the slide would seem to get a bit sluggish at times. You know, it would feel, I call it chunky, but basically it, it, it felt like it was kind of losing speed when it, when it needs to snap back in the battery. And not, to, and not too long after I started feeling that, I would get a failure to feed here and there. Um, so one of, the, one of the things that I've read, some people said to replace the recoil spring. Now, if you didn't know, um, the recoil springs for the 45, the MMP 45 caliber, specifically for the five inch model, will fit and work in this particular gun. So that was the first thing I did. I replaced the recoil spring that came with the gun with an OEM Smith & Wesson recoil spring for 45. And I ran it and I got through almost 200 rounds when I got to about the last five or six rounds of the testing, I had one near failure. It went back and then it came forward. It stopped for a split second and then it finally went fully in the battery. So I'm still counting that as a fail in my book because pistols don't work like that. They should cycle and continue to cycle until the ammunition is spent. Is spent excuse me. So I still count that as a failure, even though it went in the battery without me having to tap the rear of the slide. So at the, after that, um, yeah, okay. So that particular issue happened after I replaced the recoil spring. So then I went and looked again, and some people recommended the Wolf Precision recoil spring. So this is basically... Uh, yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's basically what this is. I'll put a link to the website down in the in the details section, so just in case. But basically, the one that I got is the Wolf Recoil Spring and Guide Rod, for the 22-pound one. So essentially, it sends you, the, when you get it, you will get the spring and you'll get the guide rod assembly. They're, they're two separate pieces. They're not captured, but you can still install it in the gun and run it just like the standard stock OEM springs. Just if you're planning to do that, two things. One, the spring is not captured. So when you go to put the, put the recoil spring and guide right in the gun, be very mindful of that because you're putting it under spring tension. It's very easy for that thing to slip. You don't want it going into your eye. You don't want it going into someone else's eye. You don't want it going into your TV and all that. So just be very mindful of that. That's the first thing. The second thing is I've noticed that the recoil was a bit more stout during shooting. And I just basically attributed that to the heavier recoil spring that I put in there. So I replaced the recoil spring and I ran about another 100 rounds through the gun. That brings me up to about the 900 round mark. And like clockwork, just as I was nearing the end of my last 100 rounds, I got a failure to feed. And in that instance, I had to hit the rear of the slide to get the slide to go fully in the battery and to continue shooting. So I say all that to say, I really like this gun. I really like this gun. I want to love it, but I can't. You know, if I uh, see a lot of people carry 10 millimeter, not just as a self-defense concealed carry load, but a lot of people carry 10 millimeter when they go out to hunt, when they're in bear country and things like that. And if a gun is not going to be reliable, it's a fail in my book. I mean, granted, yes, I love the ergonomics. I love the look. I love the features. I love the Smith & Wesson M&Ps. You know, I have a number of M&Ps, so I really like the platform, but... This right here is a bit of a heartbreak because I really enjoy shooting this thing. It's really fun and looks really good, but nine failures to feed out of 900 rounds, that's not gonna fly in my book and that's not gonna fly in a, other, a lot of other people's books. So I have not reached out to Smith & Wesson regarding this. I probably will just to see what they'll do. I've heard other people said that they've done the same thing and unfortunately, whatever remediations that Smith & Wesson did, it did not fix their particular problem. 
But I'm going to give it a shot because I really like this gun so far. I've had three 10 millimeter handguns in my lifetime so far, and this is by far my favorite in terms of looks, in terms of ergonomics and everything, accuracy. So I really want this to be as bomb proof, reliable as my other 10 mil, as my other, as all my other handguns. Honestly, that's what I want for this. So. I'm not giving up on it. I'm going to see what I can do. I may get the 24 pound recoil spring, but I don't, I'm not sure if that's going to solve the issue here. One thing that I do know that I did notice that when the gun is cleaned, it'll run like a champ. I've noticed that as it gets dirty and I guess as more friction begins to build up inside there, that's when it's having an issue and i'm pretty I, I stay on top of my cleaning my guns i usually clean my guns after every rain session just because that's just me you know so the gun wasn't really dirty but at the same time it's not like i put five thousand rounds through this thing and it wasn't clean so i'm not gonna take that you know that's no excuse so but anyway i'm gonna leave it there for the most part like i said you know I really like the gun, it's fun to shoot and everything, but I cannot in good conscience recommend this for someone who's either, you know, home to, I, I just, I, I can't in good conscience recommend it, at least not right now, as it stands now. I don't know if Smith & West is going to come out with a revised version of this maybe the model without the frame amount of safety maybe they'll figure out how to you know resolve those failures to feed issues you know hopefully i hope so because like i said i really i really do like this thing but i want to love it but right now i can't recommend it for anyone who's going to be who's going to need it for anything really serious so but anyway that's pretty much all i have for you today um, I'm going to do a versus video between this and my six hour X10. So definitely stay tuned to the channel and keep a lookout for that. And as always, guys, I want to thank guys and gals, excuse me. I want to thank you all for coming to the channel, taking the time to watch these videos. If you enjoyed today's video, please let me know by smashing that like button, leaving a comment down below, subscribing, sharing the video, all that. But most importantly, I will I need to hear from y'all if you guys have have the any form of the Smith and Wesson 10 millimeter whether you're talking about the four inch the four and a half inch or the 5.6 inch let me know what your experiences are if there's something I'm missing maybe if there's something that I can do and you know without having to send it back for Smith and Wesson whatever the case may be let me know drop it down in the comments like i said i put the wolf precision 22 pounds uh, recoil spring and guy rod assembly in the gun already and for the most part it ran but i still had the failure to feed i didn't have any issues with the magazine springs maybe i need to change those too so if you know of any good ones again let me know down in the comment section below all right y'all so that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching this is your big homie and i'm out peace